of two videos that I'm going to be doing on one of the most anticipated movies of this year, Frozen 2. Frozen quickly became one of my all-time favorite films, and in today's video I want to talk a little bit about the influence that it had on this very channel, what we know about Frozen 2, and what I hope to see in this sequel. In part two, which will be coming out next week, I want to explore some popular fan theories about Frozen. Before we begin, I want to say that I realize that this is a little bit of a deviation from my normal content, but as Frozen had such a big impact on my life, I thought it would be fun to share some of this story with you. If this isn't, if this isn't your thing, I completely understand, and just know that I will be going back to my regular organ content in February. So on to Frozen 2. But before we get there, we need to take a quick look at the original movie. Frozen was groundbreaking for Disney. It is the only feature, it's the only animated feature-length film to gross over $1 billion, and it is, or at least it was, one of the top 10 most successful movies of all time from a financial standpoint. But the movie was groundbreaking from more than just a box office standpoint. Frozen turned all the conventions of the princess genre on its head, conventions that incidentally Disney created. The prince turns out to be the bad guy, and the act of true love comes not from a kiss, but from a sister's sacrifice. It was a refreshing and touching story about the bond between two sisters, and the ultimate power of the love between them. And of course, there's the music, which, if you didn't like it, well, you just have to let it go. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Speaking of Let It Go, let's talk for a moment about how that song is almost singularly responsible for this channel. Okay, that statement might be a bit of a stretch, but let me explain. I first heard Let It Go before I saw the movie, and I instantly became obsessed with it. I remember that I was working uh, as a pizza delivery driver at the time, and I think it was the only song that I listened to for several hours the first night I heard it. Anyway, as much as I appreciate the message of the song, I felt like it didn't really apply to me. At that time, I was hard at work preparing for an organ competition. I was trying to fulfill my dream of becoming a concert organist by going the traditional route, enter and win competitions to gain exposure and hopefully get picked up by an artist manager. At the same time though, I have always enjoyed other music besides classical and had been wondering how to incorporate that into my life as an organist. Well, a couple months after my infatuation with Elsa's power ballad began, I got some bad news. I didn't make it into the performance round of that competition that I had poured so much time and energy into. I was initially devastated, but soon began to realize that I was no longer constrained by required classical repertoire, and I could begin pursuing music that I wanted to learn. And that's when I began writing arrangements. I pursued a number of other projects and pathways before I ultimately decided to start this YouTube channel, but that's a story for another day. For now, we'll just leave it at everything that I'm doing here has its roots in that one song. Now, you're probably wondering if I'm ever going to get around to talking about Frozen 2, and I have good news for you! We're to that point now. So let's start with what we already know about Frozen 2 from Disney. Okay, we know almost nothing. Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck are returning as the directors, and they have confirmed that all of the original cast will be returning, along with two new characters. We have no idea who will be playing those characters, so your guess is as good as mine. Other than the release date of November 22nd, we know pretty much nothing. There's been a flurry of gossip around the internet over the past few weeks over an image of Anna and Elsa that has been leaked to the public from a calendar that was sent to Russian media sources. The speculation is that this, is, this picture is giving us a preview of Anna and Elsa's new attire from Frozen 2 and hints about the time of year that the movie will take place. Of course, Disney has not confirmed anything, so we're just left to wonder. Apparently, though, something like this happened with Solo last year, where an image from a calendar was leaked before any official publicity came from Disney, and then the official stuff matched the leaked image, so maybe that's what's happening again. And while I personally love the new image, I take anything that comes through social media with a very large grain of salt. So that's what we do know. 
Now here are some of my hopes for the movie. By the way, I'm going to be referencing a few things from the original movie, so if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. First off, with the news that all the major characters are returning, I expect Hans to be the villain once again. In the novel A Frozen Heart, which I highly recommend, and I don't know if it's canon or not, we get a lot of Hans's backstory. He was definitely mistreated by most of his brothers, that's for sure. At the end of Frozen, the French ambassador wonders what Han's big brothers will think of his behavior. I will return this scoundrel to his country. We shall see what his 12 big brothers think of his behavior. Some of his brothers could be pretty ruthless in their own bids for power, and I believe that Han's actions are actually going to gain him a lot of respect with some of them. I personally feel that Hans believes he was cheated out of a kingdom that should rightfully have been his, and he will return with one or more of his brothers to try to overthrow Arendelle. Cue one of the two new characters. What then of the other villain from Frozen, the Duke of Wesselton? While he is greedy and definitely lets his emotions rule his thinking, I actually see him as less of a villain and more of an antagonist. I could potentially envision a situation in which his character flips to make him one of the good guys. I don't really expect this to happen, but you never know. The rest of the story, I believe, is going to be centered around Elsa's magic, but not in the bad way that did with the original, with Elsa's fear of her abilities. I think that she has come to accept her powers and learn full control of them. This can be seen to some extent in the two short films that we've gotten, Frozen Fever and Olaf's Frozen Adventure. Shameless plug, if you haven't seen any of my December arrangements, they are all the songs from that second short. Elsa is clearly comfortable with her powers, and while she still blames herself for her separation from Anna, she is learning to deal with those emotions. No, I think that we may see the story delve into why Anna has powers in the first place. In the TV series Once Upon a Time, we got a lot of backstory on Anna and Elsa when they showed up in the show's main setting of Storybrooke, Maine. Again, I don't know if any of that is canon, but in that version of the story, Anna and Elsa's mother was one of three sisters, and one of them had ice magic just like Elsa's. I've always been intrigued by one line from the original movie that I've long suspected would be the basis for the second. After Anna is struck by Elsa's powers as a child, the king and queen take her to the trolls for help. Upon arrival, the troll known as Grandpobby asks if Elsa was born with her powers or cursed. Your Majesty, born with the powers or cursed? I thought that that was an interesting question, and it led me to think, well, what happens if someone is cursed with powers? Not in the sense that the powers themselves are a curse, but that a curse is put on by someone else. I could possibly envision a scenario where Anna and Elsa try to investigate the source of Elsa's magic, and in the process, Anna gets cursed with powers of her own. Then the tables would turn, and it would be Elsa who needs to save her sister. I could possibly see Anna being reckless with her powers, trying to avoid becoming Elsa when she was younger by being her polar opposite, not concealing her abilities but show them off, probably to a detrimental effect. What then of Olaf, Kristoff, and Sven? For these three, I'm really not sure. So much of the action in the first movie centered on Anna and Kristoff, so I would like to see this movie focus more on the relationship between Anna and Elsa. Olaf, Kristoff, and Sven could potentially have their own story arc, possibly centered on them being in charge of Arendelle's defense against Hans while Anna and Elsa are away. One little side note here, in the leaked image, it, to me it looks like Anna is older, which could just be due to the fact that her hair is down. Now again, I don't know if this is real or not, but it did get me thinking. I think that it would be very interesting for this movie to take place several years after the first, possibly even with Anna and Kristoff already being married, maybe even having their own children. That's just a thought that I had. There's one more major thing I want to comment on before I give my last few thoughts. Over the past couple of years, there has been a debate raging online over whether or not Elsa should have a love interest. Many people believe that one of the new characters will fill this role. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of that debate. You can go look it up for yourself if you want to. 
It is my firm belief, however, that the true power of Elsa's character lies in the fact that she does not have a love interest. She is the first Disney princess to ever break this stereotype. I believe that she is an ideal role model for the idea that you don't need a romantic relationship to be happy. Elsa has the love of her family and friends, and that is enough for her. As I said, I think that is the true power of her character, and I believe that any attempts to give her a love interest will severely weaken her character. It all goes back to the old princess tropes that the original movie worked so hard to undo, and I absolutely believe that this would be a mistake for Frozen 2. Which leads me to my last point. I know, I've been going on about this for far too long already. Part of the reason I believe that we've heard nothing about this movie is to safeguard the ending and the future of the storyline. I've seen numerous comments from people online who think the movie is going to take a darker and more serious turn. It's been six years since the last movie came out, which means that most of the kids who saw it are now entering their teenage years. I expect the movie to still be geared toward kids, but if there's one thing that Disney is good at, it's making their animated movies appeal to everyone. Just look at happened with The Incredibles. Disney has not rushed this film when they certainly could have to cash in upon the franchise's popularity. And while I'm not sure about a darker tone for the movie, I do believe this. I think that the movie will end with an unresolved issue that is going to set up Frozen 3, and I would not be at all surprised to learn that that story is already in the works. So that's everything that I'm hoping for or am expecting to see in Frozen 2. One last quick thought, I would love to see a princess crossover movie, and they have the perfect excuse to bring Rapunzel into the mix since she was at Elsa's coronation. For more on that, you can see my video on the connection between Tangled and Frozen. But now I want to hear from you. Are you excited for Frozen 2? What do you hope to see in this movie? If you enjoyed this video today, please be sure to give it a like, leave me a comment, and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to subscribe, and make sure you click that little notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all my latest posts. Be sure to follow me on social media, and if you'd like to help support the channel, I would encourage you to consider becoming one of my Patreons. You can find links to all of these sites down in the description. Thanks for watching. See you real soon.